Hi, and welcome to my sci-fi, fantasy, and horror short fiction roundup for June 2023, the whole bunch of stories that I read in Love Month. And if you want to read the text version of this roundup, it's available at my website, Maria's Reading. And there's uh, links in the description on stories this time around. So, my first story pick is The Uncool Hunters by Andrew Dana Hudson in Escape Pod. And this episode is narrated by Valerie Valdez. Now, oh my gosh, I'm just going to say right away, go read this story. Uh, It is hilarious. It is heartfelt in a humorous way. And it includes a slap down drag out fight in a future Costco where plant based spam, cinnamon pickle dates, and hand rolled microdolmadas, among other things, are used as weapons. And it's a showdown between two uncool hunters, Rocky Cornelius and her nemesis Amherst Swarthmore. Um, So what's an uncool hunter? Well, they are market researchers with twists in this future. To quote the story, Rocky had an eagle for gen... Eagle Eye for generic branding and had analyzed all 58 season of NCIS and its attendant IP multiverse. For a reasonable fee, Rocky could tell the blue checks and one percenters just where we find Rocky prowling at Costco at night waiting for the doors to open. And when the doors do open, uh, she, she'd watch their faces make crucial consumer choices and from their micro emotes divine what they wanted, what they needed. So, but Amherst, Rocky's nemesis, like I said, is also prowling the same Costco, leading to an utterly hilarious fight, both verbal and physical, that tells you a whole heck of a lot about the society that Rocky and Amherst find themselves in. This is brilliant and, like I said, hilarious science fiction. My next story pick is Constellation Burn by Josh Roundtree in Bourbon Pen. This is like a half-dreamed, half-horror, gorgeous beauty of a tale that is brutal and mesmerizing and utterly captivating. Jordan is on the run from her life and ends up hitching a ride with a stranger who says he will protect her and take care of her. But the place he brings her to is a corner of the world that seems to exist in the world and yet also... And the man's seven daughters, and I'm making air quotes there, haunt and fascinate Jordan with their strange whispers of mother, mother, mother. Roundtree weaves a tale that feels like myth and horror and real world intertwined, and it is a brilliant read. My next story pick is Some Assembly Required by Anne E.G. Nidham in Fantasy Magazine. Now, please don't just read my review of the story. Uh, Check it out in person, a.k.a. Castle in the Air. This story uses um, this particular stylistic form brilliantly and to great effect, and and it's paired with some wonderful and beautifully charming drawings. And I'm just going to quote a little piece of these instructions. Place one or more inspirations, A, in base position to provide foundation. Important. Be sure all inspirations are securely tethered before proceeding with assembly. Yes, and while this piece is whimsical in tone, there is also a soulful, uh, heartfelt depth beneath. My next story pick is Joy by Dale Smith in IZ Digital, which is Interzone Digital. Uh, And if you have stories about human beings forming unlikely bonds with robots, then this story will be right up your alley. I love everything about the story. The setup with a 24-hour with 24-hour delivery drones being poached by human beings trying to survive in a harsh future that truly doesn't seem so far from our present. I love the way Joy, the story's protagonist, finds finds well. 
finds it almost impossible to attack and disassemble the drone she shoots down once it speaks to her. And I love the way the drone clearly shows itself to have its own agenda in spite of whatever its programming might say. It's a masterful piece of science fiction, and I adore every bit of it. Now, my next story pick is Nomi by Audrey Obubisa Darko in Cast of Wonders, and it's narrated by C.D. Cantamokli. And the story was first published in A Mind to Silence, the 2022 Kane Prize anthology. This is a riveting and, frankly, quite harrowing story about Nomi, a child born without magic in a world where magic is expected. Um, Nomi's father has told them all their life that they caused their mother's death at birth because of this lack of magic and that they should have never been born. So Nomi's life is lived with constant harassment and crushing psychological abuse, and yet they are not completely crushed because together with their robot companion, Akuba, they imagine and build amazing inventions, finding a way to use their creativity and dreams in new ways. But no matter how Nomi works, though, their father remains hostile and abusive, leading to a terrible showdown between child and parent that also involves one of these inventions. This is a really, really powerful story about strength and creativity and about survival under harsh and difficult circumstances. It is powerful stuff, so please, uh, yeah, read read the content warnings if you um, want to read the story. My next story pick is a novella. It's The Last Dragoners of Babazar by Indra Pramit Das, and it's out now from Subterranean Press. Now, I am an unabashed fan of Das's work, and this new novella is, an, is just a fantastic piece of fiction. It's a coming-of-age tale about, and it's about family and friendship, and it's a story that features dragons of a kind I've never met before. Dragons capable of traveling between universes in a sort of, I guess, a multiverse. Daz tells his story through the eyes of Aru, a boy who is trying to find out and to remember who he really is. Um... And to quote uh, the publisher's official blurb for this novella, Rue is a boy from nowhere, though he lives somewhere, the city of Kolkata. His classmates in school remind him he doesn't look like them and must come from somewhere else. When Rue asks his parents, they tell him they are descended from nomads, but even nomads must come from somewhere. The question, forever on the mind of the boy from nowhere, is where? Rue dreams things that wouldn't seem out of place in the fantasy novels his father read to him when young. Fragments of a culture that doesn't exist in this world, but might in another, where sky and sea are one and humans sail this eternal ocean on the backs of divine beasts. Rue dreams of dragons, of serpents impossible. Perhaps Rue remembers dragons. I don't know, just, it's an amazing amazing book. Uh, It's deeply strange, quietly gripping, gripping, and thoroughly devastating, really, but also profoundly life-affirming. My next story pick is No Spoilers by Ben Murphy in Many Worlds. Now, this intriguing and intricately crafted epistolary story is written as a missive from one person to another, musing on various scientific and academic subjects related to a multiverse uh, of sorts. Um, And it's also written as an academic paper with footnotes and commentary. Wrapped up in in all of this... um, is a tender and fraught love story that sparks questions about the nature of the universe we live in, about free will and fate, about how we play roles in our lives, either consciously or not, and how others might influence and even control our very essence, our thoughts and emotions. 
It's a profoundly thought-provoking piece where the academia is wrapped around a beating, troubled heart. My next story pick is This Is What You Came For by Fong Quan in Choreo Magazine. Now, I won't talk too much about the stories, and honestly, I'd rather just quote it endlessly because it is a story that needs to be read, savored, and experienced. The way the prose flows and slips and repeats and swirls around the same place, the same people coming back again and again. There's a club, there's the music and the drinks, the people and the dance, and the music is magic and the lyrics are magic and all of it becomes the emotions of the crowd. And the narrator is there looking for something, finding something, but never quite able to hold on to it or fully remember what they are searching for. It's a gorgeous story, mysterious and sinuous, and the prose is pure magic. My next story pick is What Was Left Behind by Epiphany Farrell in Coffin Bell. This is a deliciously dark, wickedly sharp slice of fantasy about a horse named Roby, a woman named Crystal, and a marriage that, shall we say, does not quite work out. Farrell um, captures mood and setting and characters with exquisite precision in this flash story, and it is as sharp as a knife with a jagged blade. My next story pick is After the Animal Flesh Beings by Brian Evanson and Tor.com. This is a post-apocalyptic tale about a post-human civilization of synthetic beings fixated on the concept of children and they grappling with the meaning of life after life ceases to exist. And it's uh, at the beginning of the story, it says, In the time in which we now find ourselves, we acquire our children by digging in the earth. This is hard work, much harder than the way the scattered records we are still capable of interpreting suggest it used to be done for the animal flesh beings. Evanson's story is hauntingly bleak, um, dark, and evocative like a future scene through a glass darkly. It is written like a future fairy tale or myth retold by the inhabitants of a future where the past is lost and even their own origins are mostly forgotten. Were they once animal flesh beings or are they just constructs made by them? Like everything else about the past, only fragments of the truth remain. There are images here that will be haunting my thoughts for a long time, including what happens to the malformed child. Brilliant, devastating story. My next story pick is A Pilgrimage to Memories Tattooed by Elena Pavlova in Samovar, translated by Desislava Sivilova. This is a gorgeously wrought tale about a future where tattoos carry memories and dreams and where someone is visiting the last tattooist in a small town, or maybe the last tattooist, period. What was the purpose of tattoos, the visitor wonders, and allows herself to be tattooed again and again, searching for an answer and for a connection, it seems to me, to the past and to the world. Pavlova weaves together a bleak and harrowed present with a conflicted complex and haunting past revealed by the tattoos. People and places, emotions and moments, many forgotten or lost. My next story pick is House Feratu by Chris Wilrich in Beneath Ceaseless Skies. And yes, House Feratu. I've picked both of the stories from this particular in issue of Beneath Ceaseless Skies for this roundup, uh, roundup. And both of these stories are stories that put a real twist on what you might at first perceive as a monster. In the story by Wilrich, a very long-lived master thieves, thief meets and enters into a partnership with a woman and mother who is sort of kind of a vampire. But she is a house Feratu rather than just a regular vampire. I won't give away the details of the house Feratu's fate, but I really love how this story twists and turns the old vampire trope. And now it also delves deep into issues of motherhood, parenthood, 
And what a person might lose when their family, children, and spouse demand too much of them. It's a story with a sense of humor and a lot of heart. My next story pick, also from Beneath Ceaseless Skies, is Spinning Shadow by Margaret Ronald. In this story, the shadow undying has risen. Yes, the master of Frostkeep, the lord of the dominion of night, has been reborn as was foretold. But things are not at all the way the shadow undying had planned when he decided to use magic in order to rise again at some future point. A lot of time has passed for one thing, and then he finds himself rising from a shard of crystal that he sort of put himself in, um, but a shard of crystal that is being used by a woman spinning thread. Very disappointing. Ronald gives us a tender, funny, and heart-tugging tale of redemption and love. Not exactly what the Shadow Undying had planned, but maybe making for a better ending than what might have been the case otherwise. It's a charming and thoroughly enjoyable tale. My next story pick is Baobab Lover by Kwame Sound Daniels in Tales and Feathers. Tales and Feathers is a magazine for a slice of for the slice of life fantasy genre focusing on the cozy the comforting and the sentiment no plot just vibes in this story a dryad of sorts leaves her grove in zimbabwe and ends up in america the world is different there life is different there and living there requires her to change and adapt and then she meets sophia who also has roots in another part of the world and has her own entirely different kind of magic. It's a beautifully woven, quietly powerful story about magic and life, about love and finding your way in a new world. My next story pick is In Her Wake by Ellis Montgomery and Apparition Lit. In this story, the protagonist is being tested quite literally by the gods. It's a deadly and competitive game of worship, faith, and tasks that must be performed in order for the participants to win and stay alive. There's faith here, faith and fear and death, and in the end we find out what matters most to the winning god. It's a harsh and harrowing tale with one heck of a kick at the end. My next story pick is Undog by Eugenia Tiantafilo in Strange Horizons. Now, I'll read a little bit from this story. There's a dog in this house, a not quite a dog, an undog. I heard its whimpering the first week I slept here, the thump, thump, thump of its bulky legs on the old tiles. Oh gosh, I love this dark and strange and tangled tale of the undog and the haunted house it inhabits and the way the story's narrator finds a way to live with this creature lurking in the shadows. Triantafilo tells a visceral, heart-rending tale of abuse and healing and about how to make space for the undog in your life. My next story pick is Want Itself is a Treasure in Heaven by Theodora Ward in Uncanny Magazine. Ah, I love the story. I love the way it winds itself through past and present, the way it soars high and dives deep, and I love the way it captures the real, conflicted, complex, and sometimes terrible emotions of love and obsession, and the arduous journey it can be to find yourself, your true self, in the world. Ward's story is set in a future where it's possible to install technology in your body and then share your body with someone else to let your mind enter another person and experience the world as they see it, to see yourself as they see you. Ward captures the love, agony, pain, joy, lust, and grief of the narrator with prose that is both tender and jaggedly fierce. My next story pick is also from Uncanny Magazine, and it's The Rain Remembers What the Sky Forgets by Fran Wilde. This is a story that combines a deep and profoundly affecting look at grief and retribution with the art of hat making and with the terrible trade of using the feathers and bodies of birds to make hats. 
Fran Wilde's masterful storytelling and prose makes every bit of the story gleam darkly, and the ending, oh, the ending. It's worth noting also that there is real history behind this tale, to quote the author's note. In the early 1900s, the plumage fashion battles were in full swing, with Audubon societies formed to protect endangered birds and hundreds taking pledges to wear only sustainable feathers. States and municipalities attempted to pass, or successfully pass, numerous local laws until the Migratory Bird Act passed uh, nationally in 1918. Highly recommend you read this story. My next story pick is Place of Four Winds by Gabrielle Mara in The Deadlands. Here in this story, the afterlife is twined together with the world of the living into a powerful, compelling story. A dead woman fights against the pull of death to warn the living of an approaching danger, while a father mourns the death of his daughter. The implacable forces of the afterlife and the dead woman's determination to find a way to reach beyond the veil make this story cut true and deep. I especially like how vivid the world of the dead is drawn here in all its strange and punishing detail. My next story pick is There's a Door to the Land of the Dead in the Land of the Dead by Sarah Pinsker in The Deadlands again. Here we meet Vera, who works in a theme park called the Land of the Dead. It's a place out in the boonies somewhere, far from everything, not exactly a roaring success. Vera has come there after a breakup, looking for a place to stay, not quite knowing where the rest of her life is headed. At the theme park, she meets and befriends one of the park's original employees, Adelaide, the oldest, coolest queer I'd ever met. (laughs) Pinsker's writing is always a treat, and this story is both deeply moving and quietly funny, and its mood deepens and darkens as Adelaide shows Vera a mysterious door or gateway in the woods. This month, I also have a nonfiction pick. My nonfiction pick of the month is Wither Queer, The Genre at Midlife and a Reckless by Kai Ashanta Wilson and Strange Horizons. Read this for some great reading suggestions and also look up any and all fiction by Kai Ashanta Wilson and read that too. Uh, I also have a pre-order pick this month. My pre-order pick of the month is uh, a short story collection. If Wishes Were Obfuscation Codes and Other Stories by Malon Edwards, and it's published by Fireside Fiction. Uh, This collection collects 10 cyberpunk dispatches, including a brand new epic rap novella. So this is a great story. If you've read anything by Malon Edwards, um, you'll have an inkling of what to expect. It's, but this is a great collection. It's out in September, and yeah, go pre-order it. And that was my last story pick for this month. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll be back next month with more. Thanks so much.